Hello and welcome to Northwest Knitting. My name is Kathy and this is my knitting podcast where I talk to you about my knitting projects and my making of clothes and other things for a sustainable wardrobe. I am so glad to be back. It's been a little while because of a bunch of different reasons, but um, the main thing is that I wasn't able to knit for almost two months and only recently started back. I got permission from my physical therapist to give it a chance, and that's been going all right. So um, anyway, that's where I've been, and then um, I also got a cold, and I'm still not sure if I can get through this podcast without excessive throat clearing, so we'll see how it goes. If you've been here before, very welcome back to you, and thank you so much for watching, and welcome to any new viewers. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Northwest Knitting. And I'm coming to you from Eugene, Oregon, in the Willamette Valley of Oregon. So, um, let me show, I haven't been knitting, and I, um, so I've had, I'm pulling out, this is not, this sweater is not um, knit by me, it's um, uh, machine made, and um, this is a really old shawl that, um, was a pattern by um, Stephen West, one I think maybe one of his earliest patterns, and it's called the Boneyard Shawl. Um, he had the sample knit in plain gray, and it's a free pattern on Ravelry, and it's just very fun, a regular uh, triangle shawl with a little bit of purling, and I used the um, um, what was it? It was the um, Stonehenge Fiber Mill Sport Weight yarn, and um, it's called Crazy, and it uses up all the mill ends. So some of you may have come across that. The colors are really fun, and um, I've never had the discipline to just knit as they come and I've ended up cutting up a whole bunch of the skeins, which is crazy. <laughs> but I guess I thought the colors were a little crazy sometimes. Anyway, so let me tell you what I've been doing. Um, as you can imagine, it was extremely frustrating not to be able to knit. And um, so I tried, um, last time I showed you a little embroidery, I tried doing mending using some embroidery. I have to say that is not my skill area, um, but I did get some mending done. That was very satisfying. And um, I also looked at my um, knitted clothes to see if there was anything that I could change or fix um, short of knitting and um and i did find this right here um which is my sipola sweater by um caitlin hunter of boyland knitworks so um you may have run into this it had a it has a beautiful yoke and um she had it as a short sleeved and long sleeved and the long sleeved pat in the pattern has some gorgeous um, color work on the sleeves, which I chose not to do. I um, this was my first color work pattern, and I did it in um, that Queensland United um, that I've talked about so many times in past episodes, and. Um, it's half wool, half cotton, and I wouldn't recommend it for your first uh, color work project. It's very, it, to me, it felt very uneven, um, especially when I was doing, I don't know if you can see here, even blocked. It's, re it's really hard for a new, um, a new color work knitter to deal with, but... Um, um, overall, I was pretty happy with it, and of course, it was so thrilling to be able to do um, this kind of color work. I, I felt great about it. 
Now, the original pattern has only two colors, and that is what I did. Um, I think this color right here is Wisteria, the, the more purpley color, and I don't know what color this is. But after I made it, I wasn't so sure. To me, this color, this light colors, I felt like it kind of washed me out. Um, and I've always meant to add a color with duplicate stitch. So when I had all this time where I couldn't knit, I ended up um, adding in those that teal. And it was very fun uh, to do and kind of satisfying. As you can see, there's, there's pretty big uh, space in between here. So I did not carry floats with my, um, with my addition, with my Swiss darning. And so I've just left it hanging. So we'll see what happens. I, um, just last week, I saw somebody else do that to a two color stranded project. And I think her name was, um, it's Victorious Wools, and she added um, two different colors with duplicate stitch. And it was, the colors she picked were really exciting. And because she had used a woolly yarn, the, um, the Swiss darned colors really popped. So um, anyway, I was curious as to what she did with her ends because... That's a lot of ends, and, and um, <clears throat> I wasn't, I don't know, I was trying to think, is there something I could think of or do that would make this work? She said she didn't, she just left hers as is also. So hers was wool though, 100% wool, and it probably, um, it's, they're not gonna go anywhere. I'm not so sure with this one. Anyway, that's an old project. I think um, the pattern came out in 2017 and I did it in 2018. So this is one of my, um, I, one of my very oldest sweater patterns. I'm hoping I have some um, lemon and honey in this, um, um, I think it's an elderberry tea and I'm hoping that will solve the throat problem. I'm not really sick anymore, but um, definitely not sounding good sometimes. <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm hoping this addition will make me want to wear the sweater more. Um, I will say though, that um, even though I love the design and um, um, I love, you know, I just love this yoke and everything. Um, it, the fabric is just, it's like not warm enough for winter and a little too hot for summer, especially with the color work. So um, I just find I don't reach for it. Um, so we'll see if this, this improves its wearability for me. You know, not everything's a home run, even with a great pattern. And there's nothing wrong with the yarn. I've used it a lot for um, summer projects. So anyway, we'll see. It wasn't a great marriage of pattern and, um, and wool and yarn. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I... Um, I have, so finally I'm able to knit. Um, I was very frustrated that I couldn't knit over the holiday. Um, I didn't knit anything for anybody except that I had finished the baby bonnet for my uh, youngest granddaughter, June, um, in time before the knitting attack, before the shoulder and hand problem came up. So I was able to give that, but no one else got a gift from me. <clears throat> However, now I have permission to knit. And some, one of my granddaughters is having a baby. Excuse me. 
is having a birthday. She is a baby. She's having a birthday. And so I have uh, started something for her. Now I have to tell you that um, where I am right now, after all this time of not being able to knit, is that I do feel very thoughtful about what I am choosing to knit. What projects am I going to pick? And um, let me fix that just a little bit. There we go. Um, so um, I'm working on my technique. I've tried to incorporate, I talked last time about trying to incorporate possibly the Norwegian Pearl. Um, I got the book uh, Knitting Comfortably by Carson Demers um, for uh, a gift and I've been looking at that in terms of posture and all the things that I can do to um, make knitting not cause body problems. And um, um, I've tried very, very hard to change my knitting so I don't let my um, finger um, keep popping up. I've tried to keep my fingers close to the needles. Um, and at first that was really frustrating, but I am finding it easier and easier. And I think possibly I might be able to knit faster this way. So. Um, that was good. I looked at a lot of different um, different people doing continental knitting, which is what I do. <clears throat> and um, that really helped me because some people were saying the same words, but their hands looked different. And um, I found it a little easier to actually bend my finger more instead of having the yarn, my hands so straight, just more curved in a natural way. So that's feeling okay. But as I'm practicing this um, more mindful knitting, I am feeling like I need some pretty simple projects that um, I can work on, at least initially here. So the project I started for my granddaughter is um, flax light and you can see maybe that there's a little bit of garter stitch down here i'm not doing that because i am doing um some stripes so um let me see this so this is um i'm doing this with different strands of sheepy stone washed so i'm using um i was thinking i might use this for <laughs> i wasn't sure well maybe i can't remember what i said last time i might have been thinking about doing the battenberg blanket which i talked about last time as a possible thing but anyway i settled on this um for the sweater and it this is ruby corundum and crystal quartz this one's lilac quartz very pale and this one is deep amethyst so together there they are yeah so I'm pretty happy. I'm, I can't say that my way of doing the stripes was the most creative um, thing in the world. I'm doing the um, two darker colors alternating with the lighter with a lighter color. And um, anyway, it's moving right along. And um, I think I probably have another three inches on the body and then I'll start sleeves. So anyway, that has been very fun and I needed something where I could get the pattern quickly. I would know how to do it straight through. And um, so it feels like 
I'm in control again because <laughs> I have not felt in control with my knitting, that's for sure. Another thing I'm planning <clears throat> is there, there is a vest and the pattern picture has disappeared. Yep. So I have a link to this, all these patterns, and that'll be in the show notes. So just go down where it says show more and click on that. So, and if I don't mention anything, just drop a comment and I will make sure that I, I do it. Last time I identified the shawl I was wearing incorrectly. It was the gamma shawl and, um, uh, uh, somebody, one of you viewers commented um, that it didn't seem like the same one and asked a question. And so thank you very much for doing that because it allowed me to correct my link. Um, anyway, this other pattern I'm thinking that I, I have done a swatch and it is the Burgos Vest by Rosa Pomar. And it is a very simple vest. Um, it's button down, v-neck, and my plan is to make it a tunic. So I am going to use this hand spun yarn I got this summer and use that. And oh, isn't that, I just love this. Um, this is, I've talked about it, uh, Oh, probably in a previous episode when I got it. Um, it's Gotland sheep yarn, and the particular sheep is named Mr. Big Lincoln, a.k.a. The Boss. So um, I'll have to get out my fleece and fiber and see what the Gotland sheep look like. Um, it's this combination of, on one hand, when you pet it like this, it feels pretty soft. It might be a little... I don't think there's a lot of people who would not find this at all close next to skin. Um, I think for me it is everywhere except up here. And I have swatched it. I had to go down. This is a DK weight yarn and the pattern calls for worsted. Um, and you might have seen, I think, Mega of Skeins of Dreams and Melissa on Mel Make Stuff and maybe Selma all have done the Burgos Fest. Um, it looks really straightforward. Um, uses a worsted weight, so um, if you want something pretty quick, you do have to pick up the button bands and the, um, around the sleeve. Since I am doing a, here's my swatch, I, I felt that it was just too loose at the, um, to get gauge, um, well, I did get gauge by going down to size six needles from the recommended size eight, but I did get gauge, um, almost. So I think I'm... The gauge is 16 and a half stitches every four inches and I ended up on size six needles I was getting four stitches to the inch. I have a really hard time getting gauge <laughs> actually getting enough stitches in per inch is hard for me. I think I just knit too loose and as I'm practicing and trying to be more gentle, I'm finding it, I'm even looser. So um, I had to go to size six to get this kind of, and you can see it's hand spun. It's pretty irregular. Well, actually, I think it's astoundingly regular, but as you knit it, you're aware that it is a hand spun yarn. So anyway, I'm very looking forward to this. This is my, um, I think I was talking at some point about how one of the um, garments that I wanted to make uh, was um, some kind of a, like a vest or something I could put over um, when I go to my exercise class 
and I usually wear leggings for that. Um, I could just put a vest on um, that would cover a very broad range of um, uh, weather and it would be great to have a little more coverage. Uh, so if I make it a tunic length, um, I think I'll be pretty happy with that. So you'll be seeing that, I hope. So what else have I been thinking about? Um, I did not have very many whips on the needles when all this came up. I was really lucky that um, that that isn't the way I go usually. But I did have what what I'm more likely to do is to have things all ready. I've swatched and I'm ready to cast on, and then maybe they'll sit. So I haven't really been calling those whips because I haven't gotten into them, but I do have two sweaters. I had a cowl I abandoned, or I probably will abandon um, because it's color work and I lost my place and haven't been able to fix it easily. Um, I had this vest for my husband I talked about many, many episodes ago. And for a variety of reasons, I'm not sure it's what I want to do. I have a pattern from Shetland Wool Week where everything's lined up with all the yarn, the swatch, everything is set. And I have hesitated on that one, which I'll tell you in a minute why. And then I also have everything set up and swatched for the pressed flowers um here's the pressed flowers um swatch so both of these sweaters are bottom up and i just have not successfully made a bottom up sweater for myself and that's the pausing i'm just Right now I'm feeling like I don't, I don't feel ready for any adversity. <laughs> so I'm pausing, but I really like to do both of those sweaters. In the meantime, there've been new sweaters that I'd really like to try. Um, so who knows next time I podcast, which I hope will be sooner rather than later, because it'll be my one year anniversary. I, um, I will have settled on one of those, I'm pretty sure. Either one of those two or there's two others I'm thinking about. One is Andrea Maori came out today with um, <clears throat> her Shiftigan, which is a cardigan version of the Shifty. And I've always wanted to make the Shifty and the Shiftigan is steaked which I really want to do next. Um, and let me think. I can't remember if it's top down or bottom up. I think it might be bottom up. Not sure. Um, but at any rate, the only thing I, I'm, it's actually would use the very same yarn that I would use for the pressed flower shawl, which I was going to use lichen and lace sport. It's a rustic heather sport. And then um, with um, spin cycle, not, not spin cycle, not decidedly not spin cycle. Um, this one is um, entropy. And it is the um, Feederbrook Farm Entropy DK 100% Blue Face Luster. And it is um, non super wash. It's um, long graduations of the color. And um, this would work great. This is, it's not super wash. Um, and it's very reasonably priced. I've mentioned this before as an alternative to um, spin cycle. If you're, I love spin cycle, but 
it's this is 260 yards um and i think if you google it you'll find um it's it's a very reasonable especially given the color um anyway the shift again take would take i could use that very same yarn for the shift again the only thing that's giving me pause is the shift again has a gauge of seven or roughly seven stitches per inch whereas the pressed flowers cardigan i believe is six stitches to the inch and i don't have that pattern right here but um both of these are beautiful beautiful patterns you can compare and contrast it down in the ravel ravelry um look at my Ravelry sites down there but so there's that and then the other <clears throat> one I wanted to talk and the reason one reason well I'm running out of knitted objects to show you and if I whoops whew, I'm losing things here um, and if um, if I don't start knitting soon I'm I'm definitely running I have a few more back there but not too many um, so this is a non, I did not hand knit this. This is um, something I found greatly on sale at TJ Maxx and it's cashmere and I got it many, it doesn't seem like it, but I am sure now it has to be at least six years old. Um, and I got another one in Navy around the same time also greatly on sale i hadn't started knitting yet i have like a little collection of precious precious cashmere and it is starting to get old and i'm really feeling the sleeves are okay right now but i'm i really don't feel like they have a lot of a lot more wear but i'll but i wanted to wear this to show you what i um because it's a sweater fit that i like a lot so as you can see it is a drop shoulder and it just goes straight down so the nice thing is because it's a light fabric um, and even though my shoulders are small, it, because it's a light fabric, it just hugs my shoulder very nicely. Um, and um, this accommodates my hips without being too big up here. So it seems like being lightweight is key. Otherwise, you could get a lot of fabric in here. Um, Anyway, I love it. And, and if I want to feel good, I put on, I have a couple of these. I put them on there. This is my favorite cut, but um, I put it on and I just feel great. I could wear this as a uniform, you know, many, many days in a row. Um, although I've kind of put them away now because I'm afraid I'm going to wear them out. So anyway, what I'd like to knit is something with a similar design. And this kind of neck doesn't always work, um, but often feels very flattering, I think, compared to a crew um, cold in the, um, in the winter. And consequently, I do pull out a shawl often for something like this. Um, but... So what I'm doing is looking at patterns and um, trying to see what what might work. So and of course I've looked at Hohi Locatelli's boxy and I've looked at other boxy sweaters. Um, I just haven't settled on one, but recent just yet today, um, oh shoot, I think her name's Amy Shear. Amy Shear just came out with a brand new sweater and I think it's called the color block sweater 
It's a pullover. It has drop shoulders. Um, you can make it short sleeve, long sleeve, um, a standard hem. You could do a, she has a, a nice split hem with some overlapping and a high low. Um, and uh, she says she's designed it in a way that the drop shoulders, particularly for the big sizes, don't cause bunching up here. She's got buzz darts. Um, what, what else was it? Oh, and so she, let me think. I don't know what the gauge is on that one, um, but she did one of hers in um, New to Din Yarn by, oh, let me look at my invoice, Honor Och Ear. And I weigh, let's see, <clears throat> I talked to you about my lusting after New to Din Yarn after hearing so much about it. And uh, one of the view, one of you viewers told me you had ordered it in the United States. It was no big deal, no big deal. So um, when they had their last um, availability, uh, it was before Thanksgiving, maybe a week or two before Thanksgiving. I heard about it. I put the timer on. Uh, I had alarms going to um, let me know. I think I had to order it at ten, like nine o'clock at night, <clears throat> Pacific time. <laughs> and I was able to order, um, I ordered some. Now, I kind of wish that I had maybe ordered different colors um, a lot of their colors are earthy tones, when are, which aren't my usual, but they had a bluish purple, and that was what I ordered, and I ordered um, 500 grams of it. Let me find it here. Comes in a paper bag. And so this is what I got. Now, sometimes this looks very plain gray to me, but um, other times you can really see the color. So it's kind of got a purpley blue uh, cast to it. When I am um, inside with no natural light at night, this looks gray, just totally gray. And, um, I feel like some of the lighter, I wish I had gotten a couple, um, maybe one of the lighter colors to compare. Um, but anyway, this is obviously a color that I'm inclined to wear. Um, so you could see how different, this is really feels like a true gray, even though it came straight from the sheep, undyed, and this is, you could see much bluer. So anyway, I did get it, and um, this was used for Amy Shear's new um, sweater. There are other options, of course. Other, there are other people used unspun yarn as well. And so that is something that I am thinking of. It looks like a very simple pattern. Um, however, I have never knit with unspun wool before. I've read quite a few things about it. I've, I've heard all the stuff about don't worry if it breaks and, um, you know, you can see that, um, that if you, let's see, if you hold it close, maybe down here, um, no, here, you can see that it doesn't break, but if you pull away like this, it just goes like this. So anyway, I thought, oh, that sounds so much fun. And I am actually very, very excited to work with it. But I have to say that I didn't, despite having heard so much about it, I wasn't really um, 
I wasn't able to to um, to knit with it very successfully initially. <clears throat> So, um, I thought I better get help with this. So I looked at a number of, um, <clears throat> YouTube, sorry about this, YouTubers, and, um, I found a very, very good, uh, episode, uh, let's see, it's by Woolen Twine. She's the German, um, I think she's a dyer, and. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, she doesn't raise the sheep, but she um, I, she's a dyer. <clears throat> um, really lovely podcast of, and she often talks about the yarn that she has available, and she has an unspun yarn, and so she had a whole episode on knitting with and caring for unspun yarn, and I highly recommend that. Um, if you are trying it out as I am, I found it really useful and it seemed, um, if I do this sweater I'm talking about, then I will hold, hold it double and she suggests rolling it up into separate balls and that way you don't have as much pressure. You're not pulling it up. I think some people do pull it up, maybe have it down beside them and pull it up, but I was a little uncertain about that. And her suggestion makes sense to me. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to pause for just a minute. Okay, and another thing, um, in addition to knitting and what I knit, another thing I've been thinking of is um, my all my yarn. So um, this came up for me. Um, I the last thing I ordered was the Nutidin in November, and I really didn't need the Nutidin. It was just for fun, truly. Um, <clears throat> um, and I've talked to you before about how much stat how much there is in stash or as i like to call it my wool pantry um and i uh we cleaned out our our food pantry recently and um that was really an experience i wanted to do it with my husband so we actually both knew what was in there and it's not huge but <clears throat> we have plenty of shelf space um, it's kind of a laundry pantry with, with lots of cabinets somebody built, which is good because there isn't a lot of storage elsewhere in the house. So that there's a lot in there. And, <clears throat> um, and we thought, oh my gosh, why do we have, we don't, I mean, it's good to be stocked up, you know, there might be. It might be a huge power crash or an earthquake or something, but um, it it seemed perhaps a little excessive. So, or let's just keep moving it along. You know, it's no good to be stocked up and keep a can around for several years. Just move them along, replenish, and so forth. And um, I was thinking of that in terms of uh, my own wool pantry. And I, um, I listened to a woman, I think her name, I think her um, podcast, I'll put the link below, it's called Nitty, Nitty Natty or something like that. Um, and she had a whole episode on spending a year um, knitting up her, using up her stash, basically. And she counted all her skeins at the beginning of the year, it was about 50 or something, and she um, knitted all through the year and did different, but she also gave some away, she donated some, she gave some to friends. Um, <clears throat> I think that was the main thing. Um, and also said she didn't stop buying yarn, um, and she particularly pointed out that at a, 
a festival that you may, um, I mean, for me, going to a fiber festival is as much about connecting with fellow knitters, fellow obsessed uh, people, as it is about obtaining new yarn. Um, but I do like to support very small um, people, like this yarn is made by Wildflower Farm in Talent, Oregon. It's just um, three hours south of here. It feels very local to me, and um, I would like to support her. And so that's why I have a whole bunch of her skeins. So I don't want to stop. You, you're probably listening to a lot of podcasts of people talking about, well, I, I'm not going to stop. <laughs> I'm not going to stop myself from buying yarn, but I need, I want to um, start knitting more of what I have. So yesterday I thought, well, I'm going to clean out. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to clean. I'm going to get everything out. And I'm going to look at it sort of the way uh, Marie Kondo does. Take everything out of your closet, spread it out, look at it, um, and so forth. And I, I, I actually did not accomplish that. I got very sidetracked almost immediately. I cast on the Saturday Shrug by Jackie Rose of Caddy Jack, Jack's Knits and started knitting it, and I got halfway through a cast on and went, what are you doing? <laughs> so, free pattern, you might check it out, link below. <laughs> but anyway, I stopped knitting that because that's just not where I'm going right now. But um, very distracted. I did try and reorganize, didn't get anywhere. You're seeing pretty much the same thing you've seen before. There's still a box under my day bed here. There's still, anyway, so I, but I am aware <clears throat> that even if I just count the sweaters quantities of yarn, I could make a lot of sweaters. I'm sure I could make um, eight or eight to 10 sweaters, really, with what I have. And okay, so that's fine. I love having a big supply of Letlopi. <clears throat> I have my cones. Can you see my cones up there, maybe? Um, of Shetland wool. Um, I, I think it's nice to have some basic... I like having some yarns that I know I could maybe just quickly decide to uh, make something for one of my granddaughters. Um, but I also, going through it, I found an, a couple yarns, a number of skeins of yarns that um, I wish I, I have buyer's remorse. I got them and they are just, I think I might have seen a sample knit up that looked appealing, but either the colors are just like, not hitting me right or um you know um i have one of a fingering yarn that it's um um i just know i have like four skeins of it oh and and i i really spent too much money on it so i am thinking of of either giving away or uh, maybe trading with somebody um but you know, um, I was listening to Fruity Knitting and um, Andrea's daughter, uh, whose name I can't remember, <laughs> um, lovely, um, she's been talking about pop psychology related to knitting and she was talking about knitting a sweater and having a problem with it, but there's this whole sunk cost that she's already invested all this time. And even though it's a problem, she should probably frog it or, or do part of it over. She's already got so much time invested that she doesn't want to do that. 
And I think that's how we look at the stash, that I spent the money and looking back, it was not a great idea. Maybe I needed a little retail therapy that day, but maybe I could think of another way to satisfy that um, itch. Maybe if I pulled out some of my yarns in my stash, maybe I could, um, you know, work my way past that. But I have plenty of yarn and I, I'm not even talking about all the single skeins that and sock yarn and anyway a lot of it i look at it it makes me feel happy there's a future project that's great but when i see yarn and i think i don't really want to knit with it but now i feel like i have to think of something to knit with it and the reality is i do not i do not have to I could pass it along. I could find some other solution for it. So it's not looking at me just kind of like, boy, did you make a bad choice there? You could have invested in <laughs> this yarn or that yarn or could have bought, you know, five skeins of spin cycle for that or whatever. So anyway, that's, <clears throat> I have this um, not being able to knit has kind of put me in a reset. And that's one of the things that I've been, thinking about. So I do have a little pile of yarns that I have taken out and I put in a separate place and I am hoping that they will be exiting my house and my little studio here very soon. Um, okay, I think I'm getting close to the end. I have been reading. I got some books for um, Christmas Santa brought me um, Lucy by the Sea by Elizabeth Strout that I really enjoyed. And that's um, about Lucy Barton. So if you haven't read anything um, along that uh, Lucy Barton series, you might want to start at the beginning with Lucy. My name is Lucy Barton. And then um, I also read Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. Um, and that is a book, um, it's a novel, it takes place um, in current day in the midst of the opioid crisis in Appalachia. And some of it is very, a lot of it is a tough read, but for most of it, I couldn't put it down. The beginning is hard. If you can get past page 193, then you're, <laughs> no, I felt like, it was hard at the beginning, but I knew it was based on David Copper, not entirely. She's not trying to write a modern version of David Copperfield exactly, but a lot of the characters and the general, I think, um, arc story, arc of the storyline are based on David Copperfield, which is a book that I read when I was like 12 or something. And then read again later. It's too young for somebody. It, well, it could be. I don't know what I was doing reading it at 12. It was probably really hard, and I do remember plowing through it, but it's also one of my favorite books. So I do know the storyline. I did know the storyline roughly. Um, and so I kept plowing away, even though some of the early parts of Demon Copperhead are really rough, really rough to read about. <clears throat> But I really did like it and recommend it. So I hope you're all well. My next episode is my anniversary episode. I have no idea what I'm going to do. Um, if anything, I guess I might say if you have any particular questions or anything that you want to know um, within reason, um, Feel free to put a question down there and I could talk about that in my next episode. And um, I hope you're all doing well. Um, COVID's on the rise again and uh, a lot. I had a non-COVID cold, um, <clears throat> but it still lingered on and on and on. So I'm almost at the very end of it. It's just the little bit in my throat here. And 
I hope you are doing well and not uh, succumbing uh, to anything awful. <laughs> and I, let's see, I think that's about it. It's a gray, gloomy day, but talking to you has really brightened it for me. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. So happy knitting.